A little further out in the Berkshires in Williamstown, the Clark Art Institute is acknowledging the centennial of Renoir's death with a show of work we don't often see about him. His relevatory nudes. These are the works by French painter Pierre Auguste Renoir we're used to seeing. Swirling society, flower-filled fields, and pretty lagoons. But despite this lasting visual legacy, there is one subject he returned to from the beginning of his career to the end, and which is rarely discussed. The nude was a way that he could align himself with the canon of art history. Throughout his 65-year career, Renoir returned to the nude over and over, with a style and effort that evolved considerably. And yet this is the first time since the artist's death 100 years ago there has ever been an exhibition devoted to the subject to which he was so devoted. Esther Bell is the curator of this groundbreaking show at the Clark Art Institute. So as a very young boy, he spent time in the Louvre, which was an open and public institution, and he studied the works of Peter Paul Rubens, of Greek and Roman sculptures, and the nude was a historic art form that he wanted to adopt in his own practice. From inception, before he made his mark with Impressionism, Renoir made an early foray into realism in moody works with a hyper-clarity. So as a young artist, he first trained in front of the model alongside the future Impressionists Claude Monet, Alfred Sisley, Frédéric Basile. They are studying in front of someone who would come and pose because in order to become a great artist, you had to first master the um, human anatomy. Mostly women we see here, not very many men. He does treat men, but certainly the female form is of greater interest to him. Like his fellow student Monet, Renoir made his biggest splash in the avant-garde as an Impressionist, a movement that took hold for its radical treatment of color and light. But even here, alongside his peers, Renoir was an outlier. What Degas is doing is something much more naturalist. Degas is treating real women in real places, the boudoir or at the toilette. And Renoir is more interested in a timeless Arcadian vision, something that's more interested in happiness and pleasure and lightness. And this is something that he was ultimately criticized for. Why? Holding on to the idea of happiness can be considered frivolous or not serious. But Renoir believed that there was too much unhappiness in the world, and he was interested in exploring the, this other side of life. This was, for me, one of the most uh, surprising discovery uh, for the ex of this exhibition. Olivier Millet is director of the Clark, which has one of the largest Renoir collections in the world. But it wasn't until this show and seeing these drawings that Millet says he's truly understood the extent of Renoir's skill. The idea that Renoir could spend so much of his energy trying to have something which is so sharp, so well done, so cleverly organized, was for me a revolution. Renoir made this series of sketches in preparation for his masterpiece, The Great Bathers, now at the Philadelphia Museum of Art and too fragile to travel here. Reunited from around the world, these drawings are all rendered simply in red, white, and black pencil. How does he get this, the skin tone? He's putting the red, putting the white, mixing them very subtly, and uh, sometimes he's creating darker uh, line uh, in, with the red, and he's mixing, that is, for example, an amazing masterpiece of an intricate relationship between the black and the red. These are very, very traditional. Tradition had become paramount to Renoir. At age 40, the artist visited Italy for the first time. It was an awakening. Seeing the work of Renaissance artists like Raphael gave Renoir what he called a crisis of Impressionism. He's understanding that he missed part of an education about this. And he said, oh, why I've not seen that before? And he's fascinating by the line. Until now, he was more fascinating by color. He has always been a colorist. For the rest of his career, Renoir continued to push himself and experiment. His nudes became less impressionistic, less real, less defined. It was work that grabbed the attention of a younger crowd, not looking to buck tradition, 
but to bust it wide open. Pablo Picasso, um, upon returning from Italy in 1917, enters what scholars have called a Renoirian crisis, where he makes repeated attempts to meet him. And when Picasso eventually makes um, his own fortune, he begins to buy Renoir's paintings and putting the, placing them in his studio for inspiration. Renoir, once derided by his own peers for being mired in the pretty, had become the darling of the new modern art movement. Matisse said of Renoir, I've always felt that recorded time holds no nobler story, no more heroic, no more magnificent achievement than that of Renoir. Although that has always been up for debate. This is one of Renoir's final paintings, completed in the last year of his life. At its creation, critics and even museums found it repulsive. But a young Matisse thought it was pure genius. Some have called this a symbol of, of anti-feminism. Some have called this a painting of pure modernism. Some critics have called this grotesque. And some artists that we now admire greatly called this a masterpiece. So anything that can make us debate and, and question ourselves, I think is endlessly fascinating. Not unlike this body of work, now revealed.